absolutely fantastic. They ignore Harry and Meghan and keep doing their sacred duty. I'd like to extend a warm welcome to anyone who is tuning into UK Royal News Trends newscast today. Queen Camilla and Princess Catherine, the real British royals, looked stunning tonight at the reception for the diplomatic corps. Everyone seems at ease and happy, and both Prince William and King Charles look dashing in their formal attire. The celebration was also very joyful. At Georgetown University, none other than Hillary Clinton presented Sophie, Countess of Wessex, with an award, which she did not pay for, prize given for efforts to end sexual violence in war zones. Sophie had a close relationship with the late Queen and has been looking down as of late, but she was all smiles for photos with the former First Lady. Sophie worked hard, and it paid off with this recognition. Princess Beatrice and her mother Sarah Ferguson went to Claridge's for the Lady Garden Gala. For the first time since Sarah and Prince Andrew split, Sarah and the rest of the York family have been invited to spend Christmas together at Sandringham. A group of former royals who desperately cling to their titles flew to New York to accept an award they had paid for. What a strange thing! They forked over money to have the illusion that they were victims of racism at the hands of the true royal family. They lied about their circumstances and paid for a mediocre award in order to receive Ripples of Hope award. After releasing a second teaser for their reality show, they saw over 15 million negative reactions and only 1.2 million positive ones. Who are these pathetic, mistakenly optimistic 1.2 million? It turned out that one of the men responsible for silencing Meghan's critics is actually a close friend of hers. And I suppose Harry, who looks stoned out of his mind these days. Netflix is well aware that one of their original series is a huge financial failure. Meghan no longer has an Archiewell helper. Also this week, she suffered the loss of two Netflix directors. In addition, Meghan has not stopped her pattern of sexism toward female co-workers. She was abusive to the Netflix reality show's producers and their experience with her was traumatic. That means it hasn't stopped yet. And it's being talked about in the open how Meghan never got pregnant. Certainly not with Archie around. Furthermore, Lily does not appear to be present. Sad. Meghan Markle's poorly constructed white dress has been widely criticized. The dress is poorly tailored with puckered seams at ankle length and a loose fit over her hips and thighs. Someone should probably tell Meghan about the dress rental service that outfitted Catherine, Prince of Wales, in the beautiful, perfectly fitting gown she wore to the Earshot Prize Gala. What are they getting from these two entitled, ungrateful and downright nasty people? If only the non-disclosure agreements they made their employees sign could be nullified so that all the mud they are throwing at the royal family in the mistaken belief that they're safe from retaliation could be returned to them. I cannot believe how low they have stooped. Personnel in royal households are trusted members of the society. Neither signing NDAs nor telling tales is something they care about. They are not only successful, but also quite pleased with the results. The government has a personality clash policy in place. You can use this as justification for asking a transfer if you are truly unable to collaborate with a co-worker. They understand that not everyone will be your cup of tea and that you only need to explain how it is negatively impacting your work or mental health. Everything has been running smoothly for a very long time. Nobody had to deal with the Markle's bullying because they were an unpleasant interruption. They clearly made great efforts because the royal family is more important to them than the Markle's. You handle the problem internally. Let's move on to the British royal family who appears to be living the good life.
Take a good look at the handsome prince and the lovely princess of the Wales. How fortunate we are to benefit from their efforts and the fruits of their labor. Princess Diana will host her second annual Christmas carol service next week and the Middleton family, along with the Queen Camilla and King Charles, will be in the attendance. Even Prince William is joining in on the fun. It's nice to see the royal family out and about in the run-up to the holiday season. There's not much to these burgers. A lot of attention is paid to their every whimper in the local media, but I try to tune it out. They're probably doomed after their upcoming documentary drama. I can't wait to see Princess Charlotte play the piano in her second Christmas show. I was pleased to learn that King Charles II and the Queen Consort would be present as well. I have faith in all three youngsters. Meanwhile, I'm crossing my fingers that King Charles will listen to his wife Queen Camilla if he wants to work towards the survival of the British monarchy which, as the king of the realm, he's committed to placing before all else. Now that Harry has stooped as low as he possibly can following his evil wife into the gutter by treasonously accepting an award for condemning structural racism within the royal family that is not the least bit racist. Even though their birth or even presence in the Sussex family is shrouded in mystery, the children are still included in the line of succession. Prompting the question of how King Charles can stop further media scrutiny into mystery children. Even though their birth or even presence in the Sussex family is shrouded in mystery, the children are still included in the line of succession, prompting the question of how King Charles can stop further media scrutiny into mystery children. There is no convincing evidence that the two children were successfully delivered and no obstetrician or gynecologist has signed off on their births. They did not appear on any passengers' lists going to or from the UK, and a photo that was released on June the 2nd was allegedly taken when they arrived at Frogmore Cottage, retailed as will be evident. The first is the original photograph, which was taken in Canada around the turn of the year 2020. They posted a photo of themselves in front of Frogmore Cottage in June of 2022. And my, how Archie has developed in just the past five months. And Megan, the woman with the square jaw, the wide mouth, and the full lips, has an oval face and is a Caucasian. Clearly, Markle and the doll were added to that photo of Frogmore Cottage using photo editing software. Unlike the other people there, she has on winter clothing. The security guards and Harry both have masks on, which is something I don't think was the case six months ago. Who the young man is, is a mystery. Results? Fake. She believes that we will fall for her completely ridiculous claims. Narcissists aren't concerned with the fallout from their actions. They want to be admired, maybe even worshipped. So they haphazardly do things in a very obvious attempt to gain that level of adoration. Is that why she seems to think we are so dim? Nope. There is only one thought bubble in her severely disordered personality's alternate reality, and it's not contain our responses. I don't understand why the palace isn't just coming out and saying that everyone already knows to be true about her pregnancies, or at least the first one, and the kids. The palace should disqualify them from the line of succession if they use a surrogate. What do they have to threaten the royal family with? It's the same kind of trickery as the opera interview headline doctoring by choosing the wrong footage to convey a desired impression slash narrative. It seems that this time around, the public was ready for such antics and eager to delve deeply into the footage and clips. The element of surprise worked in favor of the opera interview and corrections to inaccuracies and misrepresentations were not made until after the show had already aired.
The documentary on Netflix has been eagerly awaited for quite some time. We live in an era where everyone is prepared. As sure as the sun always rises and sets, the same out of context but narrative propping up shenanigans keep popping up. One of the best reactions to Meghan Markle's appearance on opera was a Daily Mail headline that read, Meghan's seed will taint the royal family. Without any background information, the headline's intended readers, Americans, will likely draw the false conclusion that the Daily Mail, and by extension the UK press, is fundamentally racist. The truth is that they were the ones who publicly shamed a UKIP glamour model over her racist comments about Meghan using their platform to have the incident reported in the Daily Mail and rightly condemning the racist model in question. However, it was obvious that we were being manipulated and that this didn't fit into the plan. If you have to defend the Daily Mail, you know that Harry and Meghan have really messed up. Even before it premiered, the show was met with widespread mockery and it's completely untrue that the media harassed them physically like they claimed Diana and Catherine did. The opposite is true. How about you? What do you think of the points I made in my video? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below and feel free to bring up Harry, Meghan and the rest of the royal family as well. If you find my video to be helpful, please give it a thumbs up and tell your friends about it. You can make sure you never miss a clip from UK Royal News Trends News Crew by clicking the button below. Now I'd like to say thank you for watching, say farewell and hope to see you in future videos.